All right, this is the old reliable. This is the ICT model that's without a doubt never seemed to fail me. All right. Now, I got a little bit confused recently and started trying to throw in extra ICT concepts and just you end up with over analysis. But I've found time and time again that the 2022 model is the most simple, the easiest mechanical setup to use. And what do I mean by mechanicals? I mean, there are clear cut rules to it. And if these rules are not, these rules or conditions are not met, then there's no trade. For me personally, that works better than discretionary trading. So I really like how mechanical this model is. So we're revisiting it. I made a video on this earlier on. It was one of the first videos I made on my channel. But we're going back to it, revisiting it, and just refining and clarifying it. Um, this is the model I used to actually get funded with Top Step 50k futures account. And it's the one I'm using moving forward to secure more funding and make my living as a trader. So here it is. Now... I'll show you a live example of this, a replay example from this week. I had a really good week this week using this model, and I'll show you a nice live replay of this in action. But before we get into this, here it is. So here's the matrix I use to frame my trade, the 2022 matrix. Very, very easy, okay? So number one, when I go into the charts every day, I'm marking out the following areas, okay? Previous days low, previous days high, 9.30 a.m. open, lunchtime high and low, in the morning session high and low. Now, why the morning session high and low? Because I trade the afternoon session. So that may be different for you. If you trade the morning session high and low, you can mark out the London session high and low. That might do you a bit better. But this is what I do. I mark out the morning high and low coming into trade at 1 p.m. Cool, so now that I've got those areas marked out, after those areas are marked on the charts, I have them all nice and clear. I'm now looking for a sweep in liquidity. So. Depending on the bias for the week, now this is an important part. I've got a video coming tomorrow discussing bias, all right? Depending on the bias, this will determine what you're looking for. So if your bias is bullish on the week or the day, then I'm looking for sell-side liquidity to, to be swept. So sell-side liquidity would be the previous day's low, sell-side, lunchtime lows, sell-side, AM session lows, sell-side. So if I'm if I'm bullish, looking for those session those lows to be swept or regarding the 9:30 a.m. open i'll be wanting to see price above 9:30 a.m. open okay if i'm wanting to short from there above or near 9:30 a.m. is a good good kind of way to measure that if i'm bearish i'm looking for buy side to be swept okay so that'll be the previous day's high lunchtime's high AM sessions high or at or near 9.30 AM open, okay? So that's what I'm looking for if I'm bearish. And now if price is consolidating, so on the weekly and daily chart, we're just consolidating, then all I'm looking for is the obvious short-term draw on liquidity, all right? So there could be uh, around the lows and highs, price might just sweep those areas and gun for a, another area, obvious level of liquidity, equal lows, equal highs, that kind of thing. So that's for more consolidation market profiles. But in general, if you're bullish, bearish, that's what you're looking for. After that, I'm anticipating, after liquidity has been swept, I'm anticipating a shift in market structure, okay? So once that area has been traded below, say for example, we trade below the previous day's low, and then as soon as we're trading below that area, Basically, I'm using the 15 minute, the five minute, and the three minute chart to look for a shift in market structure. And I'll show you examples of this very soon, all right? Now, I find the 15 minute, five minute, three minute charts are the most reliable. It's very easy to get lost on the sub three minute charts, three, two, one minutes, and there's a lot of fake outs that happen there, okay? So 15, five, and three minutes seem to be the most reliable based on my back testing data and the live data that I've been obviously showing on stream, okay? so. Less fake outs on these three time frames intraday. Now, once that market structure shift has occurred, I'm looking for a fair value gap to be created. So that's your entry point. So once you see that fair value gap created, that is where you want to place your limit orders to enter your trade. And the best type of fair value gaps are the ones that line up with an order block or a breaker block. Those are the most high probability setups in my experience. What I'm targeting from there is a put an opposing inefficiency first 
and then opposing liquidity. All right. So I'll show you how this works soon. Let's go over to the charts. I'll show you a nice example from Tuesday, I believe it was. All right, so here we are. This is Tuesday, all right? Tuesday, the morning session has ended. So morning, you look from 9.30 till 1 p.m., which is when I start trading, all right? So like I said, when I come in, what am I marking out? First of all, in this example, let's use the uh, a.m. session. So here we are. I count it as starting from 9.30. It's when the start of the real trading session it begins. So 9.30, here's the low. Boom. Here's the high. Boom, all right? And I'll just change that color so you can see it. Now, to frame this for the day, so before coming into this day, I had a bullish bias on the week, all right? I have anticipated price to be reaching into a weekly inefficiency on the buy side, so price I'm expecting to be reaching upwards for the entire week, okay? So bullish bias, so what does that mean? I'm looking for sell side to be swept, okay? So I'm looking for lows to be swept before I take a trade. Now, obviously, you can see morning session high, morning session low. Now, for price to come down and sweep the morning session low would be quite an ask, okay? In the PM session, for it to come all the way down, sweep this low and pump up would be quite an ambitious thing to anticipate. So what else did we list in the first slide I showed you? Well, not only the, the morning session high and lows am I looking for, but also the lunch high and lows. So there's lunch high, 12 a.m., 12 p.m., lunch low right here. The lowest point of lunch of that lunch hour 12 to 1 the lowest point was right here okay now a little bonus to this trade was not only was there the low of lunch time but there's also see all these wicks down here well, those are relative equal lows and those are obvious draws on liquidity like we mentioned on the first slide as well so if there was no bias here even without a bias this area here is quite an obvious level where we can expect price to draw back into price likes to dig into these areas where there are relative equal or perfect equal lows and highs so that's another little zone of interest in this trade to just note so here we are on the 15 minute chart and the trading session begins for me 1 p.m now i'm anticipating price to move higher after sweeping sell side so here we go price is trading trading getting close getting close and boom so there we are price taps into not only the lunchtime low but also those suspicious relative equal lows there so now that that's happened i'm dropping down to a five minute chart right and what can i see here after this lunchtime low and these relative equal lows here from the morning session have been swept we see quite a reaction here okay the candle here breaks the high of the previous candle, it's quite a strong reaction. Now, if we drop down to the three minute chart, that is even more so evident. And I want you to watch here what happens. Boom, right there, see what happened there? So this is a shift in market structure. So we have a swing high here, which has been broken by another push higher so that signifies a shift in market structure we've come below traded below the sell side liquidity expecting higher prices we've traded below had a good reaction price came in boom market structure shift right here okay now there is your fair value gap all right right here so after that shift in market structure price left a fair value gap and what happened right after that the candle immediately following the candle at 2.42 p.m. dipped into that fair value gap and say that's where you enter your trade. Fair value gap, not only is there a fair value gap, it's also lined up with an order block as well. So that series of down close candles classified as an order block. So almost a perfect setup right here. Order block plus fair value gap, high probability. And where would we be targeting based on the 2022 model rules laid out at the beginning so we're targeting uh, either opposing liquidity or inefficiencies now if we zoom out a bit and like i said it's good to frame your trades in the higher time frame so we're zooming out this here this swing high 12 p.m expecting higher prices i can expect the 12 p.m high to be taken out for the day price to finish nice and strong above 12 p.m. So let's drop down again, down to the five minute and let's watch this play out. So we've got the entry there, 
entered on the Fair Valley Gap Plus order block and watch this. So we could have balls of steel already. Boom. Done. Look at that. So all based off the bias, the bias was higher prices on the day for the week. Expecting sell side to be swept. Okay, so we had that predetermined lunchtime sell side swept. Then we have the high of the day over here as a target. It took all of, say, from 245 till 340. So just just under an hour for price to reach that target and if you entered right there on that fair value gap you are looking at 38 ticks profit all right 38 ticks do the math you're trading the e-mini $12.50 per tick per contract that's quite a sizable move nice and easy and in fact I was hitting moves like this all week the only week this week this failed me was on Wednesday and that was because I was trading against the bias against the trend okay so don't do that I've got a video coming tomorrow on how to determine bias but that is the 2022 model in action there it's nice and simple now some extra rules I like to use to frame this 2022 model is here so the common question I get is what if there are multiple fair value gaps on that market structure shift which one do you choose this will cause you to sometimes miss trades but this is how I like to frame the higher probability most profitable trades okay if there are multiple fair value gaps I'm going to choose the one that's in discount or premium depending on my bias or pair it with the on target entry so that Fibonacci 62 to 79 percent retracement level all right so I'm choosing the ones that are either at discount or premium or in the OTE okay so that's a good kind of range to look at which fair value gap to choose you will miss some trades like this obviously because some trades create breakaway gaps and will just trade away without ever coming back to test your gap but just to avoid yourself from having the crazy risk or to get those higher probability trades I like to choose these fair value gaps all right so I do miss some but when I hit them they're good trades really good trades next rule is don't get lost in lower time frames a lot of us ICT traders tend to want to trade like him and we see him trading on Twitter and whatnot in the one minute, two minute, three minute charts, even the 15 second chart. But I find that there's just too much noise there. It's easy to get faked out in terms of, in terms of market structure shifts and whatnot. So I like to frame my trades on the one hour, 50 minute, five minute time frame. All right, drop down there, power of three, one, two, three, and only use the three minute, two minute, one minute chart to refine my entries and stop placement. All right, it's the only time I'm really using those lower time frames. Now, if those predetermined areas of interest are not hit, so the ones we laid out here, areas of interest, if those areas aren't traded to, then there's no trade. Okay, don't force a trade towards those areas. I just like to trade as soon as those areas have been swept, then I'm looking for my trade. Otherwise, I'm not doing business. If it's not reaching my interest area of interest, no business to be conducted on my part. Next thing is I don't trade news, bank holidays, or outside New York or London session, okay? That's just me. New York and London session offer the most volume. I don't like trading bank holidays because there is a lack of volume. I don't like trading news because of the wild whipsawing and the very thin liquidity during news, all right? So it's a little rule I have for myself. And the last rule here is I'd like to take one contract off at five points profit and then let the remaining one run to the full target. So once price has moved five points in my favor, I'd remove one contract or two depending on the size of my account, and then I'll let the remaining contracts run to the full target. So that guarantees I'm paying myself, and then if, if it goes to my full target, that means I get to squeeze as much as I can out of that move. So that's how I like to do the 2022 model. Um, I had a little bit of a come to Jesus moment with this model recently i'd been trying to throw in too many things too many concepts trying all these new ict concepts that he's been putting out recently and ultimately just getting lost and getting confused over analyzing but this is the old reliable the 2022 model ict himself said he made this model to uh, pass on to his daughter so his daughter could understand and trade based on his methods so it's laid out for us it's right here if it ain't broke don't fix 